Hey guys, welcome to the very first episode of Car Audio Etc. Uh, my name is James Hill and the following three or four videos will be surrounding a sound system I've done into a Toyota Altesa. Um, I've gone into quite a lot of detail with these videos so if you mainly just want to see the end product you know you can skip ahead bits and pieces but if you really want to see how I do it and what I do down to the fine detail make sure you watch them all through and give them likes and shares and I hope you enjoy them. Cheers. Welcome to Car Audio Etc. Today I am doing a sound system into a Toyota Altezza. Nothing hugely special with the system, I just, I just know it's going to sound good by looking at what I'm doing to it. I'm doing one of these awesome Alpine CDE W265 EBT stereos. These are a really great stereo if you're doing a fully amplified system because they have high voltage pre-outs, either 4 or 5 volts, I can't remember, it's probably about probably 5 volts. It's also got a 24 bit DAC in it, so that means whatever audio you put in it, audio you put into it, it's going to come out better. We're also doing a set of Alpine SPR60Cs into the front, the component speakers, and the 6x9s in the back, and also one of these nice active Rockford Fosgate 10 inch subs amp built into the side. These are a really great sub, they're great value for money, put out a good punchy sound and really clean. Best part about them is that they are completely removable. You can literally just unplug it and take it out of the car, which in today's day and age is actually a highly sought after feature in a subwoofer. When you're soldering your wires together, you want to make sure you have a nice good thick bead of solder on each end of the wire. And then it's just a matter of, you get better at it over time, but I tend to hold one wire with my two middle fingers and the other wire with my thumb and index finger. You just put them next to each other, get the soldering iron on, let them melt together and then they dry pretty quickly but if you want to dry even quicker, just give it a quick blow and it will cool off and set. Now that's hard as it rock, that's never going to separate like ever. You'll snap the wire before that comes out. A lot of people um, like to twist and then solder not highly recommended. What can happen is you can get air pockets in the centre where the solder hasn't gone all the way through. So you're actually better off just holding the two together and soldering them next to each other. And the good thing about this is that if you ever need to redo something you can just untack it and then re-tack it. Whereas when you twist it, believe me, it's really hard to un undo what you've done without short of cutting out the whole solder joint itself. So this really is the best way to do it. What you also want to do is not do what I just did and solder it to a Nissan lead. Mm. Mm, that's a good idea, let's solder it to a Nissan lead. It'll plug straight into the Toyota. Oh god. And this is why we do we solder this way. This was not scripted. I am genuinely a Muppet, but good thing I sold it the right way. This is really convenient for the video, actually, isn't it? Shit. Right. Let's go back to step two and a half and re-tin up all these wires. I was wondering where the fucking wire was. God damn it. Get the fuck off the... Oh, shit. Uh. Every morning I wake up and grab a pistol and journey into the world of my mind that has the potential to take me to anywhere I imagine I travel into invisible space and focus to help me capture the You know you are a true installer if you can solder three wires together with just two hands and no tape whatsoever. Two with one hand, the other, give it a bit of heat. Boom. I haven't uh, soldered all the wires, reason for that being, I don't think I've mentioned this to you guys yet, it is having 4 channel amp power in the speakers, an Alpine PDX F4, good amp, so obviously we just leave the speaker wires for this hanging loose. Now, for covering your solder joints, um, a lot of installers like to use heat shrink, this is a really good way to do it, but also a really good, uh, time consuming way to do it. We do have heat shrink, it's not that I don't use it, but for, for purposes of saving time, electrical tape works it works great. It's made for this purpose. Only thing you have to make sure is that you do it right. You don't just quickly wrap it around and have it sitting loose and then it comes off and things short out. If you know how to tape up nice and tight, 
where it's not going to come off, then electrical tape is the quickest, easiest way to prevent from to prevent wires from shorting out. I always like to put a wee bit more, like a longer bit, on the ones that I know are taking power. Use electrical tape for everything here. Just duct tape grants mouth shut. Cool thing about the Alpine head units as well, with the speaker wires being all loose, I can just tape all those speaker wires together in a bundle and then go into the Alpine settings and actually turn, it's called Power IC, off. That's the internal amplifier in the Alpine head unit, so I can turn that entirely off so that nothing comes out of these wires. And that's really good for when you want to you know, have your loom looking nice and tidy, otherwise I have to tape each one of these individually. So all I do for this to keep it tidying out of the way, just wrap it around a few times, make sure to go past the heads, rip it off, that'll do. And then obviously the speaker wires on the actual hookup, I've left uh, blank and soldered so that I can solder some wires from the amp onto that and they'll run straight to the speakers. You can run new speaker wires to the doors, it is a more efficient system, but unfortunately we just don't have the time today as he is picking it up tonight I believe or might might be tomorrow morning. Got my remote wire spare for turning the amps on. Couple of wraps of tape around the bulk of it. Also the great thing about electrical tape is you can, like the solder connection, undo it. Heat shrink is much harder to undo. It involves like cutting it up, hacking it up with your side cutters most of the time. Whereas this you can just unwrap it and rewrap it. And it's, it's not sticky doesn't rip the hairs off, but it sticks to itself really good. That's one piece done. Another one at the base of this. I'm quitting my job to be a drummer. Same for the real one. Little wrap there. And a little wrap there. Mm. Pretty tidy. Okay, you remember how I said I was an idiot before? I am still an idiot. That is the Nissan plug. Get out of there. This is the Toyota plug, but I don't know why, but I put this in here earlier. Fuck, I'm having one of those days. What day is it? Wednesday? Let's just go ahead and say it's Monday. Because that's what it feels like. There's that. I'll put a piece of taper in here. That's where they wrapped the band expander wire around. Typical dealer install. Cut. Wrap and tape, cup twist and tape. Does not work people, you cannot just twist and tape. There's some wiring done, really really long, so in case you want your stereo mounted on your steering wheel, you can do it. Just a bit of double sided tape, she'll be right mate. Done. That's that part. Uh, next, what do we want to do next? I think next, I'll get, ugh, I'll get the annoying job out of the way. This is the part of the job I don't like. not much cool about this you're probably not gonna I probably won't document this much mm. test test <laughs> I'm gonna put the microphone up there boom it is there now that's just oh my god I'm so magical back in mmm mmm wise t ducks around and tucks up there nicely and I don't think it's gonna go anywhere though this headlining is pretty damn tight gonna make sure that's how you put a panel back on. You smash the shit out of it. Runs along the headlining, down, behind the glove box, <gasps> and then, boom, microphone, done. That's the boring part anyway. Next part, what's, what's the next part? Pretty soon I have to start wiring up for the amplifiers and sub, but I haven't got all the parts that I want yet. I'm still waiting on a couple things to be overnight couriered. And that's always good when you're waiting on the courier. So I think instead I'll start doing some speakers, get them out of the way, because I know that I'm not going to have to run wires for them or anything, it's just a matter of mounting the bastards in there. So that'll be what I do next. Make sure to check out the channel over the next couple of days guys, I should have the install video of the speakers up relatively soon, and then following that the amplifier and subwoofer install. Don't forget to like and subscribe, cheers.